And then I get this word that I am to deliver Jessica Simpson to this park where she's singing these boots are made for walking. In the realm of Dukes of Hazard, in 2005, they, re they released a Dukes of Hazard movie. And pre-controversial flag and everything else under the sun, Jessica Simpson, Johnny Knoxville, Sean William Scott, they threw him a bone too. I sent them 80 wheels for the General Lee because I had accumulated a mini barn full of wheels in Indianapolis. They, they discontinued them in 84. And I, would, I could see him go by at 100 miles an hour and pull somebody over and say, hey, I'd like to buy the wheels off your car. It's usually on a Camaro or some old hot rod. They released this movie in 05. And prior to that, they had done a Batman movie, which I think was Batman Begins or Batman Returns or Batman Showed Up or whatever Batman it was. And that was the first time they introduced the Tumblr as the Batmobile. And so the Tumblr's cruising through downtown Chicago, which was Gotham City and being chased by all these blue and white Gotham police cars and going through Lower Wacker Drive and through the underground and all back all over Chicago and, and through things and, and Crown Vicks are crashing into each other and the, of course the Batmobile gets away as always. Little did anyone know those same blue and white Crown Victorias that said Gotham police on them went down to Louisiana when they filmed the Dukes of Hazard movie. And then they became Georgia State Patrol cars. So if you watch the Batman movie, whichever one it was, and then the 2005 Dukes of Hazzard movie, they're both Warner Brothers productions, and Warner Brothers simply recycled the Crown Victorias and saved some bucks and just moved them from Chicago down to Louisiana. They filmed in not only Baton Rouge, but they filmed in New Orleans. And it's bizarre to watch the Dukes of Hazzard movie take place because the General Lee will slide through New Orleans. And I think the stop lights in New Orleans are green, the outer round of them, but then it'll slide through a scene and come out and they're all yellow and that means they're in Baton Rouge about 40 minutes away. So boy, that the General Lee is pretty powerful as it's cruising 40 miles in less than a second. But some terrible acting and some bad editing later, we had the Dukes of Hazard movie. MTV came along and they had a show called Your Picture Show or Your Movie Show or some thing where MTV would recreate a scene from your favorite movie. And they decided to pick the 2005 Dukes of Hazzard movie at the same time that it came out, a little promotion, Warner Brothers, thank you very much. And they are going to jump a General Lee. And the very first jump of the very first General Lee was at Oxford College, Saturday, November 11th, 1978. They jumped it at uh, Emory University, Oxford College in front of Seney Hall. So MTV would like to recreate that, but they need permission from the college. And at that point, I was their kind of go-to because I knew people at the college and they realized how important that their property was to the Dukes of Hazard. And so MTV asked me to approach them. I got permission from the school to jump a General Lee one more time in front of Oxford College to recreate the jump from 78 to promote the Dukes of Hazard movie. But something that was never revealed on the whole thing is unless you were watching that jump from space, they removed the flag off the car. Oxford College, Emory University, gave them permission to jump the car, but that car was flagless the entire time, and it still went off without a hitch. Nobody got hurt, nobody's ever said anything about it. But that was another instance that the flag was removed from the car, no harm, no foul, it was still the General Lee. So on back to the uh, 2005 Dukes of Hazard movie. In promotion, not only with this MTV thing that we jumped a car with no flag on it, nobody got hurt, no harm, no foul. Rhino Linings, of all people, were a sponsor for the Dukes of Hazard movie. This epic masterpiece. And so they needed somebody to drive a generally across the country to promote the Duke 2005 Dukes of Hazard movie. So guess who they call? that has a General Lee. So I shipped my car from Indianapolis to, I think it was San Diego area where the Rhino Line and headquarters is are. We had to be at the world premiere of the Dukes of Hazzard movie the next day. And so we did Knott's Berry Farm or something down there. And then we did 
the world premiere red carpet. That was on a Tuesday we had to do the world premiere. We had to be at New in New York City for Good Morning America Friday for the premiere premiere. So we did a promotion across the country and stopped at like every movie theater, everything from uh, Los Angeles down through Arizona, New Mexico, Texas, all the way up the coast. And then I get this word that I am to deliver Jessica Simpson to this park where she's singing these boots are made for walking, right? I'm down here in this terribly running 1969 Dodge Charger that had just driven all the way across the country and vapor locked in Phoenix and it was not good, but it's a road trip and you make memories and you tell stories about them. And here comes Jessica Simpson and she's going to get in the General Lee and if you ever watch her talk back in the day, she, she talks through her teeth like it's the weirdest. Eh, I can't even do it right. But uh, she was with the uh, Lachey guy back then. She had this little dog, and she came down the stairs and just turned and handed it to him, and like he took off like he knew what to do with the dog, right? So she gets in the car, and she, true to form, some bodyguard named Tiny puts her through the window, and she's pulling her shorts, and she goes, Travis, these shorts are all up my rear end. And I go, well, I mean, you're Daisy Duke. I mean, come on, right? So I drive her over to the park and deliver to her. And she she was good. She slid out the window and did all that stuff. And then we had to go to the, or to Madame Tussauds Wax Museum to unveil her statue of her as Daisy Duke. And we had a monster truck provided by Rhino Linings, the General Lee, and we're driving through Times Square in this mess, right? So this generally at that point is really pissed off after driving all the way across the country and decides to die in Times Square. And there's a little goofy box on old Mopars where you got to whack. It's an ignition box to get it going again. And they had called in from a local New York radio station and my phone rang and they thought I was still with Jessica Simpson for me to hand her an interview. And as I did, I thought it was the folks from Rhino Lining in the monster truck, and I had to get out and whack this thing to get this General Lee to start again. And I said probably the worst string of cuss words that I've ever said in my lifetime as I answered the phone because I thought it was the monster truck and went live on the air in local New York. And it was a flip phone, I remember, because it goes from I go, I said, Motherfucker, look, wait a second, this car won't fucking run. <laughs> and it just, and it was the little. It was the radio station going live for Jessica Simpson. <laughs> and you should have heard the disc jockeys. They were like, okay. And it was easily 15, 15 <laughs> seconds of cuss words. After they were done filming and Hurricane Katrina came through and it's a, a bit of a mess down there, I went back to the filming locations and found all the people that had supplied vehicles and the the Boar's Nest was this moonlight inn down there, and it was just kind of a, a cool place in Clinton, Louisiana. And Warner Brothers had left all the Crown Victorias behind. And I uh, struck up a, a deal with the local junk man or the local guy there that for some reason had all the Crown Victorias. And I bought almost every blue and white Crown Victoria from the Dukes of Hazard movie, full roll caged. And I don't have any idea why I keep getting in trouble with Crown Victorias, but we did everything that you can do in a full roll cage Crown Victoria. And then we took them back and plated them all and ended up selling them to a bunch of different star car museums. But we paid a whopping $800 a piece for full roll cage Crown Victorias and made multiple trips to Louisiana and brought them all home. Uh, they all ended up in museums and whatever else, but we kept one and just beat the snot out of it. There's videos of me in my backyard running it into the chain link fence, trying to do donuts and the thing. But it's a free roll cage Crown Victoria, and you can do anything you want to with it. No airbags. Everything is, is disarmed. And uh, I really don't know what happened to the rest of them, but that one car, you can still see all the orange paint from where it slammed into it generally. You can see where it ran into the tumbler. And a lot of these cars are just completely recycled throughout their lives. One thing that is tough to say, we had a white one that was a, an Atlanta police car. And the, we made the license plate on the back of it says, said ATLPOPO, -P Atlanta Popo. And then we had one of the Georgia State Patrol cars that we weren't going to sell that we were going to keep. 
when we were buying the cars, we had just single car haulers. So two of us would go down and then we would like, we would drive one home and bring the other, like these are full roll cage from Louisiana to Indianapolis, just down the highway. We actually got pulled over one time in, in Illinois with them on the trailer by an officer. And he thought that because of Hurricane Katrina and all the damage of the cars, we were stealing cars out of Louisiana and bringing them up the highway. Good for him, but it, you know we had enough paperwork to get us through. But on the back of one of the Georgia State Patrol cars, we put Georgia State Patrol, which is G-A space S-T space P-O, which spells Gestapo, which flew through the BMV, but was rather offensive. We'd like to thank the Ticket Clinic for sponsoring this month of VinWiki Car Stories. If you get a ticket, no matter where it happens, it can have disastrous effects on your insurance premiums, points on your license, and possible suspension. So it's very important to find a lawyer that's local to wherever you got the ticket. The Ticket Clinic is a national law firm with headquarters in Florida and Texas, but affiliates everywhere. And they can help you find a ticket and achieve the best possible outcome. They kept me out of jail in Arkansas last year. They've helped tons of my friends and they can help you too. So visit their link in the description below for a discount.